How's it going, guys? So, uh, what the whole idea is here is, uh, well, I have got this tri blade that I'm carving, right? So, for me to carve this tri blade, I thought uh, we'll take you guys along for the ride. So, I've got a uh, glove over here, which is a a chemical latex glove that I've um, just covered in graphite powder and uh, all that's doing is keeping all the shards out of my flesh yeah should make sense I've got my optimizers on I'm also going to be putting on me eyes yeah so uh, my dad did say if you can't see then you can't see and uh, the older I get the more relevant that saying becomes so um i've rough carved two fullers and i'll show you guys how the third one goes so that is the little tool i'm using it's on my flexi shaft xr uh, so fordham sr with the standard handpiece that is a carbide ball burr uh, which is a four millimeter and uh, it's obviously foot pedal operated press and start carving So this is obviously uh, very loud, yeah? And that is the process. Yeah, you carve away, you carve away until you're happy, and then you stop. That is pretty much it. Let me just show you guys that again. Yeah. So there's a lot of guys asking, so can't I do this with a milling machine? You can do what you want to. But for the sheer fact that you're asking that question, you don't know me very well, do you? <laughs> So as you can see, I'm focusing on that scribe line on this side. Yeah, now you can't see. See the scribe line on this side, nice and straight on the line, whereas opposed to the other side, nothing. So now, if you look at my glove, yeah, so all of that. They would have ended up in my hand if I didn't have this guy on. So you're definitely a guy you don't like. You just in with this guy. Yeah, he'll remember you for quite some time. <laughs> anyway, so now I flip it around and uh, I'm going to now focus on the other side. Thank <laughs> you. 
So uh, that was a bit of a cleanup where I'm just using the, the top end of the burr um, and running it. it. And that gives you uh, not as aggressive a cut. And it does do a, uh, well, a bit of cleanup on the inside of the cut. Now I've got this undercut. I'm doing at the top here at the moment. And it's from that top cut that I'm doing that people are uh, assuming that I'm using a milling machine for it. And obviously the more you do this, the easier it becomes. But the basic advice is go slow, stop when you're happy, and don't fuck up. So I haven't gauged depth on all three of them, but that is as easy as taking a vernier um, and using the depth gauge pass of it, pushing it in there, check what the depth is, do it on there, do it on there, get them all at this point exactly the same, and then blend into the tip. Yeah. So, carrying on, carrying on. And you do want the bird to do the work. And you'll notice that I'm trying to work or uh, move my workpiece and have uh, the flexi shaft stay at the same place. Also using different parts of the burr. So I'm currently cutting with the back part of the burr and not the front, which is uh, the back part of the burr is a bit more aggressive. So I'm cutting on this side, not on the other side. So when I start cleaning up, I'll use the front end of the burr, but where I'm aggressively removing material, I'll use the back end of the burr. So now, at a slight forward angle, I'm now going to be cutting with the front of the burr, no longer the back, and I'm going to be focusing on the left-hand section and literally just smoothing out that rough cut. All right, don't do that. And you'll also hear I'm not running the machine as uh, fast. Yeah. 
Flipping around, once again focusing on this side. And now just working on uh, the bottom of that cooler, just rounding everything in. That was it. Fairly straightforward when it comes to the cleanup of that. That is a bit more complicated, but uh, this is basically the gist of it. Yeah, so the guy that uh, guys that were joining me on Instagram, thank you very much. And uh, I will be saving this as an IGTV, so you guys can have a look at that again. Yeah. Thank you. Have fun, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. So for the rest of you guys on Instagram and oh, not on Instagram, on YouTube and on Facebook. Hold on, man. He's, give me two seconds. I'm just posting this thing. Oh, crap. I need some text. I need some text. There's a load of clicking going on at the moment. Oh, no, I can't paste across devices. Well, that's a bit of a pain in the ass. Hold on, gentlemen. Hold on. Let's just do this first. Let's go to camera white. Holy crap, that is way up there, isn't that? There's my old man glasses. Let me take that off, and then I can actually see what I'm doing. So that, uh, the glasses on there that I just took off was made for me to uh, focus right there. Yeah, it's actually my grinding glasses. So glasses I had made for uh, grinding specifically. But now we'll get to uh, questions in a moment. Yeah, if there are any, by all means, please ask them. Put them up in the comments. Okay. Rap. So I thought it. I thought I finished uh, testing software, but apparently not. Yeah, getting stuff. Uh, getting stuff done is apparently proving to be a bit of an issue. Cutting in the fullers on a tri-blade select. Oh, Stiletto has got two L's. And cutting. On type quickly, apparently. Oh, this is just killing me, man. post all right so that's going to to post itself now and then we can uh, get on up in here sean Willy, game boy ben steve ellis anthony stain how's it going man we're doing well thanks brother uh how's it going steve anthony how's it going dude <laughs> that sounds like a two-stroke mosquito. Yes, it does, man. Uh, Wally, same, buddy, same. <laughs> Sean, not much, man. Mr. Mark, yeah, buddy. That's uh, Mr. Stuart Smith, an extremely, extremely talented individual. It's all his fault, by the way. All his fault. Um, if you don't know the story yet, ask me and I'll tell you the story. 
Uh, do you forge those tribe blades in a swage or other way? Sean, dude, I don't forge these things. They are stock removed. Yeah. Um, only stupid people will try to forge those. <laughs> First of the Mohicans. You are like that. You don't know what he's referring to as that. Yeah. My knee quaff. Oh, I like that. I've been wanting to do that for years. Uh, Sean is saying that I like uh, to to battle with shit. Um, <laughs> but I'm doing it fairly well, so <laughs> well, there's always that. Answer the milling machine question. Where's the milling machine question? Was there a milling machine question? Oh, yeah. Remember rule one? Always, buddy. Always. Uh, what is that, Sean? Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Sean saying thank you. It's very polite, guys. No one telling the other guy to sort off nothing. That's some racket here, man. It, it's actually not that loud. It really isn't. Uh, it's not so loud that I feel I need ear protection. Yeah. That I need to hear or wear a little earmuffs. Let me just get this off. So it's actually not that loud. Um, it's a bit annoying, but so is swinging a hammer at someone else. Yeah. Look who's in the house. Grace, how's it going? And Terry, sorry, man. You were saying, oh, yeah, it, it is quite a bit of a racket. So. Miss Grace Horn, you guys have to check her out on Instagram as well as on Facebook. Yeah, she does some of the most incredible, some of the, the most incredible. Uh, um, what? Yeah, what these guys? Like that, but not Chinese stuff. <laughs> Made in Sheffield, in the UK, Noho. Yeah? Damn. And uh, aside from that, what you guys should do is, is look into the way that she researched, her research, the sketches, and then the book, books, pamphlets, whatever documentation that normally accompany, accompanies the, the piece, as well as the packaging. They are all just mind-blowing. Seriously. Seriously. If I was in the UK, I would move in to her little shop. <laughs> Well, with me in there, there won't be space work. <laughs> She'll have to beat me out of there with a stick, man. Uh, da -da -da -da. Donovan, how's it going? Oh, gentlemen, Donovan. Dude, I haven't spoken to you for a while. Or in a while. Nick. That is it, man. There is no one else. Just It's Grace and the rest of our plebs. That's plebs. Yeah, man. You are 100%. All right, so... That is what I'm doing. Yeah, and I'm kind of bored now. So uh, that's it. Cutting those fullers. Yeah, you can see that one is a tad dodgy. Yeah, but the cleanup starts later. And then that one, I'm almost halfway. It doesn't take that long. It's just I've got a crapo's other load of other things. Oh, man, the camera's up there, and I keep on looking down here. So let me move the camera to kind of in line with the comments, and it doesn't look like I'm... Uh, so now all it, all it looks like I'm looking just past you to the guy behind you. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so that is pretty much it. Uh, it's green. Is that green? Green cam? Yeah. So let's just do that. So cutting those. Get a bit more focus in this baby. Yeah. So obviously from the tip I've measured and I've scribed a line. Click on all three facets. I don't know if you can actually see that scrum. No, there we go. And now everything is such a weird angle that I'm getting flickering. It's not supposed to happen because everything is at 60 hertz, not 50. Damn it. But anyway, so my bench lights, if I put it over onto that cam, can you see the bench lights? New. No. Let's move that cam. So these bench lights over here they are fairly cool They're actually machinist lights leds very nice quality um and they've got mag bases 
Yes, yeah, so you can. And I just made these little slip plates that I can now move them to anywhere around my bench. Yeah, so that direction there and this direction here is pretty much the same. That I find is more out of the way and it's in line with the, the shaft of my flexi shock. So, done. So at some point, I'll get my little hand, what's it, a, uh, a router, yeah? And I'll go and cut a plate that sits about 80 mil in, maybe 100 mil in, and I'll cut a groove to countersink a steel plate in there, which will make me do this easier. Because uh, a lot of times this is in the way. So I've got one on that side. Oh, let me just do this. Come on, man. Yeah. That's better. So we're one on this side, one on that side, because I rarely work with a single light source. And then obviously, uh, uh, if less than tube light over, oh, come on. Oh, this is so bloody difficult. <laughs> fluorescent tube light overhead with two camera lights on the side so if i'm recording stuff which is all in permanent setup but these two if i really need to see what i'm doing and not pretend what i'm doing then these are here yeah but if i am pretending to know what i'm on about these get taken out of the way completely blah and now i've got an open space especially if i'm recording uh, and small detail work than that there. You can also see my camera for the Instagram stuff on my phone. I get taken away. Yeah, that is pretty much it. We can take this guy away, and now you can look at the pop top of my pup. Uh, let's take that guy out of the way. Uh, Nick is asking what my wife thinks of the mohawk. Uh, brother, she doesn't care. It's my hair. Yeah, I think she will care when we eventually end up in the shops together. But that's it. I married her because she's a cool chick. Yeah, and uh, we don't do the pretentious shit thing. Uh, so if you don't know me, hey, you'll find me entertaining. Uh, if you do know me, you know you will realize that I stopped caring what other people think of me fucking years ago. So it's life a lot easier. Uh... <laughs> Short as reckon is his wife. We'll hit him <laughs> when he cuts his hair like that. But uh, the main thing is he can't because he has no hair at the top. Look, the next haircut, uh, th that's one I actually was playing around with. Yeah, was I left the stuff on the side. And then I started cutting in about there. And then I realized, oh, crap. The last time I did this, I wanted to do this. Um, I, I started shaving, yeah, but I cut skew. And I cut the thing at the back off. So I couldn't do it. So I ended up with just like a patch on the top of my head. Um, and that just looked stupid. So, but I want to I wanna still do the old man one. Yeah, Show my kids what I'll look like in I don't know, 40 years. <laughs> Scared the bejesus out of them. <laughs> it, was, it was absolutely brilliant walking into the house last night. Um, so my wife actually cut the back part. And, and, and. Um, so she saw this. Um, my kids did not when I... Uh, Went in last night. <laughs> Their faces, priceless, man. Uh, my eldest one, Luan, uh, he did a, a triple take. <laughs> yeah, man. And, uh, Peter was saying that my dad would have loved this. Yes, he would have. He had a, an incredible sense of humor. Very short fuse, but an incredible sense of humor, man. Um, I remember when I was still studying, my hair would like down here, yeah. And he always had an issue with the long hair. Come on, come on, cut your hair, cut your hair every single time he saw me. Um, then I went to the gym. I was still gymming back then, and in a bench press machine, um, I, my hair got all tangled. So they had to cut me out of the machine, which was extremely embarrassing. But I got over it. Um, and then I went to the barber, which is in the same center, and I said, "Well, just take everything off." So I went like this. So. <laughs> Went home and my dad saw these. He says, Why did you cut your hair? Oh, that was fun. That was fun. That was absolutely fun. Um, I thought I was doing him a huge favor, but at the end of the day, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like white light on what I'm doing. Um, and these LEDs are. I don't know what color it is. It is bright. That's all I know. I don't know how many Lumos it is freaking 
bright. Seriously, it's like the sun come up. Um, you don't if if you don't like scratch scratches in your blades, yeah, don't get these. Don't because they will. If you're thinking, hey, I'm at a thousand two hundred grit, and this is looking pretty cool, you switch these on, and holy crap! So that combined with the optimizer, um, you won't miss anything. Uh, Grace, yes. So the problem with I, I should be wearing bifocals, okay? But my optometrist decided that she was going to be extremely clever, and she gave me these, which is a Zeiss lens. It's got five million little different focus points. Blah 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 blah. The problem with this is that it distorts. So exactly thirty centimeters, um, which is my grind height from when I took this. That's where it's perfectly in focus and that's what it was made for um so there everything is cool but if i go just 10 mil up or 10 mil down at a flat surface all of a sudden if i try to grind anything with a like a steel plate just a 90 degree corner on it <laughs> it ends up like a 65 so that's a bit weird to get used to um and know that you should be at exact point and 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 um but for here, there, everything is perfectly in focus. And if I go forward and backwards, I can kind of auto-focus the thing. But trying to look at the comments over there, I can't read squat. Now I can read. Yeah. So I think I'll just go for the bifocals next time. Done. Because um, I can't. I can see. But if you're describing that line and you want to work up to the bloody line, can't do it anymore, man. I can't. And uh, at 30 centimeters. Everything is kind of fuzzy. So I didn't realize how blind I was until I had these, mate. Um, then you realize how much grinding you actually do just on feel. And then you kind of get impressed with yourself. You know? And then you do a blade after that, and you're thinking, oh, it takes you half the time because you know, there's no guesswork, which was freaking awesome. And I hate the camera up there. Uh, so let's get a white back in here. Which is better. Luan, you are back. Well done, buddy. So Luan had his first motorcycle crash today. Are you still feeling sorry for yourself? Yes, he says. Yeah, man, it happens. It happens to everyone. So from the fact that he kind of screwed up the bike and he now has to work his ass off to, uh, to fix it, which is a life lesson there. Yeah. Don't ride anything if it's not yours. The list includes motorcycles, cars, wives, girlfriends. If they're not yours, don't ride them. It's easy as that. If you cannot handle the heat, don't do it, man. But now that said, I took a ride on the bike. Um, it is a it was a Yamaha. Uh, off-road, blah, 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 beautiful, beautiful motorcycle. Um, but I haven't been on a motorcycle for maybe 15 years. So when I was still at school, I drove a, or rode a uh, 50cc, uh, I can't remember, a little scrambler, um, up to standard nine, so grade 11. And then I uh, bought myself a 900, well, a CBR and 900F. Back then, that was fucking serious. So, my last year and a half at school, I was riding a 900cc. Um, and then uh, a couple of years later, it got stolen. I then replaced that with a Bandit 400. Um, up to the day when my then girlfriend, now my wife, wanted bike riding lessons. And for the third time in a row, she was taking this thing on the back wheel and i said oh crap hold on that's it i am now selling this thing before it um, having to rebuild it and i had a car and uh, the the bike was basically just standing in the in the garage and uh people ask me do you miss it yes i every now and then every now and then um but it was a getting from point a to point b thing done uh, i never did a breakfast run in in all the years I'd rode bikes. Never, ever. It's just a fucking pointless driving to point A from here to there just to go to have breakfast with your mates and uh, your best mate, which is then my girlfriend, couldn't go with. Um, well, she could, but she didn't want to. Um, so, 
dick. But anyway, do I miss it? Will I now get one now that I can actually afford a really nice one? Fuck no. You see why I stay? Yeah, even me just going out to the road that I'm building now, the gravel is not set yet. Um, and the bike kind of wobbled. Yeah. Um, luckily, I could keep it under control because I wasn't going fast. And that was Luan's little downfall. Even after I told him, don't go there because you're going to end up with a, your face in the gravel. He didn't end up with his face in the gravel, but he did end up with his face in the bush. <laughs> the only bush <laughs> that we have next to the road. But yeah, that, that's it. It's a lesson learned. Um, but it was not fun when it happened. Now that I look at it. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I like the bikes. Uh... <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. But ladies and gentlemen, that was me talking crap. Yeah. Uh, long overdue. We haven't had one of these in a while. Uh, but the basic idea was there was quite a few questions on regards to how do I carve this. And in one of uh, uh, the groups where I posted a photo, people were going, what the heck is this? Chris, I'll phone you back in a while, buddy. Um, there was a huge discussion regarding what milling bits I'm using and what machine and the head should be tilted. And no, there's, there's nothing. That, that, that there, that there. A um, lot of stupidity and a bit of patience. Yeah. It's easy, man. It's easy. It's not rocket science. Otherwise, uh, well, you don't want me as a rocket scientist. Food for thought. Th food for thought. Damn it. I just ran out of English there. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, have fun. Enjoy. And we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.